You follow me, Lynn. Follow me, Lynn. Hey there, this is Maynard at Barn Shop Productions, Barn Shop Auto Paint and Maintenance uh, Series uh, on how to prep the uh, automobile body uh, for uh, painting. Uh, I've about got this original color cut down. It was red. I uh, have it cut down to the point to where I've got just a few things and I'll show you how to do these, which is enough for you to get where I'm at, what I'll show you to do. And then we'll finalize this thing with a couple of activities that we'll, we'll do with some equipment that will get it ready for the uh, primer to go on. Now, once I put the primer on, then of course I will sand it down. And once it's sanded down and prepped properly, and I feel like that there's no uh, rough places and everything is smoothed out, then I'll put some color on it and I'll put uh, the color coat on it. And then I'll go after that and put on the clear coat. Right now, what I want to do is I want to take the DA sander with the air. You may not have air. It doesn't matter if you have air or you don't have air. Basically, what you need is a sanding block or something that you can sand with. Now, basically what I want to do, because I have got this side over here pretty well ready, I want to uh, keep my hose off of it because it does have a tendency to scratch a little bit. Uh, that would probably get filled up because I'm using a high fill primer that is a polyester and it's a uh, two stage and it's very heavy. It's very, it, it builds good. Uh, it, it sands really good. But what I got is I've got a couple of places right in here that need to be finalized. Uh, I'm going to use the DA sander and I'm down already from 80 grit started out. 180 grit on top of that then to cut it down some more because you've really got to eat on it to get through that paint and clear coat that's on it originally and I'm down to where I'm with the paint in some places metal and as you notice down here if you can uh, view this right in here you'll see that I have this actually feathered out in some places that needed to be feathered out because it might have been just a slight bit high uh, if it's low, of course, you need to fill it in. And I use the acryl, uh, 3M acryl, acryl green. And the reason I use that is simply because it is a product that doesn't shrink so bad that it'll crack when you put it on and then you come back a few days later or a little bit later or a year later and it's cracked right through your paint. You don't want to do that. So that's a good, good product to use. Now this DA sander, I've got a couple of places right in here I want to work out. I'm going to show you how to do that. There are procedures that you want to follow with the DA sander that will help you and some, uh, if they're not followed, will hurt you. So now you find your own method of how to do this, but this is how I'm going to do it. Now I've got it set. I got the DA set. I can go down slow or I can increase it and I want it up right about there. Now, basically I'm going to start right here. And I got a place right here that needs working out. There's a couple of little divots there. That looks like something left little tiny scratches. Well, I know the primer will fill it in, but basically I want rid of that so I don't have to worry about the primer filling it in. Now, have you got me in it too? See this angle right here? Work it in an angle across that area or whatever area you have to work on then you come back and you work it this way you see what I'm doing here basically what it amounts to is when you cut this down these different angles what you're doing instead of cutting one direction all the time and leaving grooves and high and low places and you'll leave them in spite of everything you do uh, this assures you that you're cutting them all evenly. Going this direction and then going that direction. Now, I have that cut down pretty good. I'd like to uh, <coughs> show you now what's next. I have 320 again on a, a block. This is a 3M block right here that is flexible. It has a tendency to, to uh, give with the contour somewhat. Now listen, when you're on the hood, when you're on the top of the of the cab or a vehicle, uh, any place that has a spance of metal, they have a tendency to give. You don't want to press down now against that 
and cause your paint to be at different levels as you're sanding. You want to leave, you want to be on it light enough that it doesn't press it down and warp it. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm doing the same thing I did with that DA sander with this block of 320. And it's adhesive paint. Uh, uh, it's adhesive, uh, uh, whatever I call it. I lost the words for it. But anyway, it's the adhesive um, backed uh, 320 grit sandpaper. Finally got it out. And I want to go like this. And I want to cover this area like this. At this angle. Then I want to lift it up. I don't want to swirl it around and drag the, drag the sandpaper. Do not do that. Pick it up off of it. Don't be lazy. Pick it up and do this. Back the other direction. Like this. Now I've gone well over the area past the area that I was working on. And right here is a contour line that is a, is a, a jutes up right here and then down right here. And so I don't want to go over that so much that I wear the paint all off of that high-low spot there. Uh, some of them you have to, like I have here. But that will get this surface like you want it. Now, one other little trick. I showed in the first video how you can take this little spatula here, which is used for, for applying your uh, putty, your filler putty. And I have put a piece of my adhesive 320 on there, just like this. There are a couple of little spots, and if you can zoom in on this right here, camera person, and watch this, right here around this area that we have where the window water sprayer comes out. I didn't pop that off. I left it on there. You got a little groove right here between it and the metal that I can't get in there with my fingernail or anything. I can with this. And there I've got it. Just a little bit. That's all it took. This is plastic. It won't damage your body. It won't damage what you've been doing. So anyway, with that in mind, we've got it made. Now, right here where this contour comes down, I mentioned in my first video about this that this little cylinder of of cardboard I wrap a piece of the adhesive around it and I want to make sure it fits the exact contour <coughs> of that low high offset right there make sure that it goes all the way down in there evenly because if it just goes down in there and hits a spot in the bottom or something you're gonna have high and low spots right here and you don't want that <coughs> So there you go. That's how you work that. <coughs> now, where this is at right here, if I want to make sure that it's smooth across there, I go across that. <coughs> and I make sure it's feathered down. <coughs> it's called feathering. Now, let's move to the front of the truck here just a little bit. Uh, if you can bring the camera around here, I'm going to show you a little device that I use. It's nothing but a sponge that uh, your uh, uh, people who put in tile use for doing the grout. Should have stayed. Should have stayed. So, basically, what you've got here is this little piece. And I've got a piece of adhesive backed 320. Now, this is obviously for the DA sander. It's round. But look, this thing will fit the contour. It fits the contour. Look at that. Now, you see how I feathered this? You can see some of it, the camera, I'm sure. But I need to work this area right here just a hair more. And look, what you've got is fingers that have oil on them. Do not touch this vehicle or any vehicle you're working on with your fingers once you've broken it down to this point because it'll leave an oil spot and it will damage the paint. The paint will not adhere properly where you do that. I suggest you wear gloves. Now the gloves also help me and some people use their bare hand but I don't do it uh, and some people use cloth and they will take their fingers and rub across there and make sure that that's perfectly smooth and it is. But right over here, I've got one little spot right in here that I can feel 
that needs to be tapered down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this right here with this. Look how that contour follows. Look how it does it. And you don't have to worry about taking the palm of your hand and trying to fit it to this cur curvature. You don't have to worry about taking this block and trying to make sure it hits just right across there. You can do that, and a lot of people do. I don't. But you see, it can be done like this right here. Okay, I'm about there. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use my little technique here. Oh, by the way, when this builds up with a lot of paint or dust in it, just peel this off, and you can actually dust it off outside. Blow it off with the air. You can wash it and let it dry. I have three or four of these. So while one's drying, I'm using the other. But now here's what I want to do. Just like this right here. And as I work this, I want this edge down where it don't have any kind of a feel to it other than slick glass. Okay, now if you notice, I've been going in one direction. Now, I'm going to pull over here, and I'm going to go the opposite direction. Remember what I told you? If you keep going in one direction, you're liable to build up a high and low spot or a groove. This will cut it down. Going across it again. I'm going cross grain to what I was doing before with the sandpaper. And guess what? I can see it with my naked eye without feeling it. I can see that that is getting slicker and slicker. And that's what you want. Oh boy. All right. We're getting there. Oh my. That's nice. That'll do. When the paint goes on that, you'll not see one thing except glass right across there. And that's what you do to all the surfaces like that. Now, I've got one other one here. I want to hit this one just lightly. But look at this. This gives. I can push my finger in. If you use your finger on a piece of sandpaper, what you're doing is you're going to cause the curvature of your finger to leave a groove. You can't do that. If you do, it's going to show. And if you take your fingers and you have a piece of sandpaper in your hand and you put it like this or in the palm, sort of, uh, some people say put it more in the palm. That's fine if you can work it with the palm. But if you put it across here, across those fingers, guess what happens? Every one of those high places in your fingers will leave a groove. And you'll end up seeing the wave in your paint, final finish. So here it is. You take this, it gives, it gives to everything. This is where I work it, right up through here. Now, if you can come on around just a little bit with the camera right here and look at this, I want you to see how this has tapered out. Look how pretty that tapered out. There you go. There you go. So, again, this is how to prep your vehicle for uh, painting your... Uh, your uh, primer on. This is what has to be done prior to it. Uh, by the way, these places that I have gone through to the metal, I will seal that. Now, some people won't. These aren't through to the metal, but if you look down here, it's not lighting is not good enough here, and I don't have the light on the camera. Right here, I have hit a spot that the metal shows. These are actually layers of paint and, and primer, so I haven't gone through it, but this is metal. Now, I need that covered with a sealer. And I'll spot spray the spots that I have that need that. Because it just takes the paint better. It'll take the primer better. It'll look better. I'm able to work it down smoother. And it'll be a better job in overall by doing so. So with that in mind, this is Maynard with Barn Shop. Thanks for watching. And watch for my next video. That's when we're going to start spraying some uh, uh, paint on it. We're going to put some primer on it. And, uh, of course, I'll show you what to do to prep it just before you put the primer on because uh, certain things have to be done. The body has to be clean. You can't have lint and all this. I'll show you how to do all that. It's a very simple operation. It just takes a few minutes. But, boy, if you don't take those few minutes, it'll cost you a lot of time. So, therefore, let's, uh, let's say goodbye for the moment, but not so long because we'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.